This video is an in-depth look at fake news and will teach you how to define and identify fake news. Fake news mimics real news in form, but not purpose. It deliberately misinforms the public and is also called misinformation. Some examples of fake news includes websites that were created to look like actual news websites, fake social media accounts, and images deliberately taken out of context. Here I have an example of a fake news website. So as you can see, this website is keysee.tv, which should stand out to you as strange. It looks like an actual news website, but if you look at all of these authors of these news articles, they are just admin. Typically on news websites, you see the actual journalist's name. So this is also a red flag. If you explore this website, you can also see that there is no about page, which you can usually find on an actual news website. So this is a fake website. Here is another example of fake news. This image was widely shared on social media during the Australian bushfires in early 2020, but this image was photoshopped. This is not a real image. Um, other websites have debunked this as being fake. But let's talk about what fake news isn't. All news is not fake news. Bad journalism does exist. Journalists do make mistakes sometimes, but usually good journalists print retractions and admit to their mistakes. Satire is also not fake news. One example of a satirical newspaper is The Onion. Here you can see very sarcastic and outlandish news articles. And if you go to their about page, you will see that they do claim to be a satirical newspaper. So why would people create fake news? They do this deliberately to make money off of advertisements and to misinform the public. Some people think that this is funny. How effective is fake news? According to a 2018 study in Science magazine, a false story reaches 1,500 people six times faster on average than a true story does. And according to a 2016 article from First Monday, Experts estimate that about 400,000 bots were engaged in the political discussion about the 2016 U.S. presidential election, which accounted for roughly 3.8 million tweets and about one-fifth of the entire conversation, which is really alarming. There are many consequences of fake news. Some people say that we live in a post-truth era where all news is criticized and we're not sure who to believe. Post-truth is a political culture in which debate is framed largely by appeals to emotion, disconnected from the details of policy, and by the repeated assertion of talking points to which factual rebuttals are ignored. Fake news plays to our emotions, so we are easily persuaded and want to believe their messages. Also, there is a lack of communication between people with opposing viewpoints. Instead of breaking down barriers, People now tend to stick with their own opinions and ignore anything that opposes their own opinion. The term fake news is being weaponized and thrown around very lightly in conversations. Some people easily dismiss all news from certain journalists, newspapers, or any news that they just don't believe. Remember, not all news is fake. We should not use this term lightly. There are also many dangers of spreading fake news quickly through social media. For instance, with the current coronavirus pandemic, if someone spreads false information about the coronavirus, for example, that wearing a mask isn't useful, so you don't need to wear a mask to stop the spread of the virus, this could do some serious damage to the public. If many people believe this misinformation and stop wearing masks, then the virus will spread more quickly and more people could unfortunately die. So fake news can be deadly. In this post-truth era, fake news is damaging the media's image. 
good journalists are being attacked and questioned, you can tell a good journalist from a bad one by thinking about the code that journalists live by. Good journalists serve two purposes, to bear witness to the events of the world and to hold those in power accountable. Here are some tips for identifying fake news. Look for real URL endings. If you see .com.co, just know that that is fake. One example is abcnews.com.co. Beware of clickbait titles. Clickbait titles tap into people's emotions in this highly polarized political climate. A clickbait title is typically in all caps or it is very sensationalized. It sounds so bizarre and it can't be real that you have to click on it to learn more about it. Check an article's date. Sometimes articles go viral many years after they were posted. Fact check and cross-reference information that you read in news articles. Do some digging on the news company, the author, the topic before you believe it, before you share this information with the world. One way you can do this is by using Snopes.com. Snopes is a well-known website that fact checks information online. Very often you will find a viral piece of information and they will fact check it for you. You could also conduct a reverse image search on Google. If you go to Google Images and click this little camera icon, here you can upload an image or paste an image URL and search for that image online. Then you can see the context of this image and understand when it was originally taken, who is talking about this image, and what it is actually about. So how can we navigate this post-truth era? You can pause, reflect, and investigate before you share. It is very easy to see a news article on your social media feed and just read the headline and form an opinion and click share. I recommend reading the entire news article before liking, commenting, or sharing, and before forming an opinion. And if you are questioning any information that is offered in the news article, do a little investigation before you share. Be aware of news bias. Newspapers fall all across the political spectrum. Here you can see on this media bias chart where your favorite newspapers to read fall on the political spectrum. It's really important to recognize that newspapers do have bias. Ideally, you would be reading newspaper articles that are from the center of the political spectrum that are trying to be as unbiased as possible. Do not only consume news through social media. This is important because when you are consuming news only through social media, for example, your Facebook feed, you are only seeing newspaper articles from papers that you like, articles that are shared by your friends who probably have the same political beliefs as you. So you end up being trapped in this filter bubble where you're only seeing news articles from one perspective. Remember that you can always access many different newspapers through Snowden Library for free if you are a part of the Lycoming College community. Be aware of your own confirmation bias. Confirmation bias is the tendency to interpret new evidence as confirmation of one's existing beliefs. An example of this is assuming a news article is true just because you agree with the headline. And finally, hold your friends and family accountable. If they post anything suspicious on social media, or if they talk to you about any suspicious news articles or claims that they have just read about, look into it. Fact check their claims and comment with your findings, but it's really important to be polite about it, especially if you have differing political opinions. No one wants to look ignorant, so it's really important to tiptoe around this carefully. But ideally, you'll be having these 
important conversations. So just remember, it's up to us to be smart consumers of news. And if you ever find a suspicious news article and you'd like somebody to help you to review their claims, you can always ask a librarian for help. 